name's Pamela Kataris. I'm the excavation co-director for this site. I've got a Bachelor of Arts, an honours degree in prehistoric and historic archaeology from the University of Sydney. It's an interesting story how we got here. For a long time now, the heritage community has known that there was an inn of some type here. When the constraints assessments were done for this particular project, for the North West Rail Link, this site was identified as possessing archaeological potential and then we came in and did some further research and discovered that yes indeed there would be an insight here if it hadn't been completely destroyed. Most of the documents refer to it as the White Heart Inn. You had carriage loads of people coming by you know on their excursions and they would stop. As the settlement started to grow we're looking for more arable land. Sydney was not very good. Parramatta was good for a while. Windsor turned out to be pretty, pretty fantastic. Um, and so this was a place where one would stop on the way to Windsor from Sydney or from Parramatta and back again. This is one of the earliest roads. This is what makes the inn significant as well. Without this road, without Windsor, the colony would have probably would have expanded, but it was instrumental in the expansion and the success of the colony growing so quickly. What we think we've got so far is a, a, is a standard in design with the long veranda and the two rooms, often called the strangers' rooms, on either side. The back area um, has a dining room, restaurant, that's what we think. And then we've also got a detached kitchen building in case the kitchen caught fire. It's fascinating. We do this because we really like to do this. My name's Gillian Comber and I'm the excavation director. We're standing at the entrance to the Swan Inn, which was built sometime around 1830 or perhaps just a bit before. We have evidence here of that there was a veranda at the front. We have this sandstone line showing the footings at the front and the footings at the back um, behind us here. This was the entrance, the doorway in, because there's also um, evidence of a corridor leading up that way. The archaeological evidence is indicating to us that this was quite a substantial building. Um, very deep sandstone footings, a two-storey building. I think it was quite a significant building for its time. Most of the sandstone here wasn't cut by a stonemason. There were some, at that period in the colony, there were quite a few um, very skilled stonemasons, but they were working in the major centres. So there was no one, of course, to come and work locally here. And so the sandstone has been cut Roughly, it has not been cut by a professional master mason. Convicts have been working on the old Great North Road and we can see from there the quality of the work of the convicts, particularly with sandstone. They are exceptionally good masons. They had master masons there with them on the old Great North Road and the quality of the dressing and the cutting of the sandstone was quite exceptional. This doesn't have that level of um, skill and quality, so I don't believe that this was cut by convict gangs because it would have been a better quality. The convicts after um, 1850, when they had their ticket to leave, formed themselves into um, gangs, road building gangs, and contracted back to the government. The government that bought them out here, if you like, and had, been, had them in chains, when they got their ticket to leave, they contracted back to that government to continue road building. <laughs> uh, my name's Rebecca Newell. I'm an archaeologist um, and I also help manage the artefacts on site. We found um, probably about 500 artefacts on the site um, and they're a typical um, 19th century, um, early 20th century assemblage, so a group of artefacts that we know quite well um, and that we can see on other sites and are able to compare. We learn so much about who was here and what they were doing. Um, we begin to see, um, not that we can put faces to names, but we begin, begin to see what people were doing, uh, why they were here, they were on their way to somewhere, on their way from somewhere. Um, it was the life of a traveller and an innkeeper, um, and a life of sort of uh, quite, quite hardship and isolation, but also, you know, little delicacies like you know, children's toys and nice ceramics and toothpaste. We're really lucky to have uh, some whole bits of ceramic, like the, this is a cherry toothpaste jar. Um, and it gives us a real window into what uh, people were using, um, their personal hygiene um, and the, the ways that they kept themselves clean and um, clean and presentable uh, during the, this era. This particular toothpaste is uh, patronised by the Queen, Queen Victoria, um, so perhaps that was uh, what was making these people buy this particular toothpaste. Uh, this is our oldest coin, it's from 1816 and it's from the reign of King George. We can't exactly tell what uh, particular denomination this coin is, but yeah, we, it's definitely from 1816 and, and there's a lovely picture of George on the front. This one is from the 1858 um, and has Queen Victoria on the front. 
and the symbol of a sort of Roman um, goddess on the back. Um, the coins can tell you about how much they might have had and how important uh, coins like this were to people in those days. There's a lot of money um, in my hands in that way and to lose a coin like this is, would have been quite devastating. Um, when you look at the doll's legs or the penny ink bottles, you see you know, the families that were coming through this site on, on the way to a, a big adventure, possibly in the middle of nowhere. We find a lot of metal on the site, but it's unusual to find uh, a piece of metal that's so easily recognisable. The problem with metal is that when it's in the soil, it corrodes very quickly. It's very nice to see a clear key. Um, perhaps it was used for the front door. It's an adventure, isn't it? You know, you begin to imagine uh, the innkeeper locking up in the afternoon and the evening when all the patrons were asleep and the bar was closed and uh, the quietness that would have been here. We, we wouldn't have heard the cars, the horses would have been in the stables and, and you begin to see uh, how isolated this area was but yet how important inns were to, to people and to their travels. The inn would have been the home um, to so many stories um, of people going to their farms um, to start a new life uh, in the colony and, and further out. Um, and people coming back with tales of the bush rangers and the Aboriginal people that they would have met along the way. Um, it's, a, it's a great, inns are a great staging post and a great place to, to learn about what, um, you know, the, learn about the isolation and the, the, the vastness of, of where people were going in this completely unknown land.